Hey guys, I'm gonna do a little video on doing the water pump and everything associated with it on a 2012 Land Rover LR4. Uh, I couldn't find anything online that was in video format and I know I'm a uh, visual learner so I wanted to do that for y'all. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Thanks guys. So I'm gonna do some quick explaining here on how to get to the water pump. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this plastic cover. It just pulls up and pulls out. And I've already deconstructed a lot of the engine here just for explaining purposes. All right, next we're gonna unscrew uh, this uh, clamp right here and this one. And you'll just pull this plastic air box part out kind of like that and then just pull it out and put that off to the side we're gonna unscrew this one and unscrew this one and we'll put that off to the side and then I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's one connected to the throttle body at the end of the screwdriver here. You just have to trust me on that one. Um, but you unscrew that. And then also, there is another hose on the side right here that you just pinch and pull it out. And it's kind of hard to get, so uh, just try at it. It'll come out, I promise. And then you just pull this air plenum out and take it off and we have our throttle body and then all the water hoses for the water pump and right there's the thermostat so one thing that was hard to get to or hard to understand online is this part right here and a little plastic elbow that go into the water pump have changed designs and I couldn't find a diagram that explained why um, so I'll show you the new parts that replace this and a little plastic elbow all right so here's what I've disassembled so far so I've taken the upper radiator hose off from right here and it routes through this little sling right here into the uh, what's called the crossover pipe and we're going to replace this um, and then I've also removed uh, this hose going from the crossover pipe into the thermostat and we have a big old mess underneath the car but we're going to clean that up. And then also I've undone the uh, tensioner and the serpentine belt. And the tensioner is about to come out. So now that I have most of the hoses out of the way, we're going to use a T30 Torx uh, bit to get the four screws that are attaching the water pump to the engine. So now that we got the water pump unbolted, we're just going to pull it out. And I had to undo, there's a bracket that goes right here. Um, and I had to undo that. So now that we got the water pump flipped around, it will pull out over here. And you may have to use two hands. So now that we have the water pump out, um, you're going to try to soak up all the fluid that spilled back behind it. Um, and I'll try to show you in here. So there's going to be a, like a gasket on that. Uh, that's an outlet uh, for the water pump. Let's see if we can get some white in here. Um, that tube in the center, right there is 
uh, for the back of the water pump, there's a little plastic piece that goes on there, and I'll show you that. Um, and then right there is another gasket you'll have to take off, and I've taken those off already, um, and I'll show you that right now. So this is looking at the back of the water pump, and these are the little gaskets that you'll have to take off of those outlets and they kind of just sit like that. Um, and then this is the little plastic uh, oil cooler uh, tube that's on the back of the water pump that you'll also have to replace. And I'll link the parts and everything you need uh, down below in the description. So after we remove the water pump, um, we're gonna go ahead and change the coolant crossover pipe which is this right here, and it's, uh, it's known to crack. Um, so to do that, we're gonna have to unbolt. So there's 10 bolts on the uh, manifold, four and five, and then repeat it on the other side. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I have those out already. And then we'll have to uh, undo this high pressure fuel line uh, right here. And it's just a, a stainless steel pipe that crosses over the manifold. Um, and then terminates on the uh, driver's side. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that, and we'll lift up the manifold and change over that crossover pipe. So now that we have the uh, fuel line that runs over the manifold off, uh, I just stuck some painter's tape over the opening so no dirt gets in there. Um, dirt and fuel injectors, no good. So. I put painter's tape over all the openings on the fuel line. All right, so now that we have the crossover pipe installed and we rebolted in all 10 bolts that hold the intake manifold down, uh, we're gonna put the uh, crossover fuel pipe uh, back in. And also, I forgot to mention uh, on the oil cooler, uh, down in the valley of here. Let me see if I can situate the camera with some light. Uh, there may be an O-ring on that oil cooler pipe that you need to make sure that you get off. And here's that O-ring that was on the oil cooler pipe. And your kit should uh, bring a new one of these and you'll put that on and the worst thing to do is cheap out and not replace this oil cooler pipe that goes in the back of the water pump to save I think it's like I don't know 10 15 dollars uh, for the pipe in this o-ring and honestly it comes in most all water pump kits um, you'll have that leak and then you have to do this job all over again and that would not be fun. All right, now we have the uh, new thermostat in. Um, this was a pain. That screw holding the thermostat on is very hard to get to. And then you need to make sure that the clamps on the bottom of the thermostat are on this side. Otherwise, you'll, you won't be able to reach them with a pair of pliers to get the clamp and there's one right there on the bottom. So uh, that kind of took me a little bit to figure out. So we're ready to put the new water pump in. Here's the kit that uh, I bought. Um, it's a genuine Land Rover part. Um, here's the little oil uh, part that goes behind uh, the water pump and I'll show you where it goes here. Um, that will go in there and then this is the o-ring that goes on the engine part uh, to seal this part or this little oil uh, it'll go like that once it's finally in the car so we're gonna get ready to put that in and there's a torque specification, and I have my torque wrench here. It's nine foot-pounds on these bolts. 
which is 108 inch pounds. Um, and I don't have a torque wrench that goes to nine foot pounds. So I went to AutoZone and rented a inch pound uh, torque wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. So now we have our new water pump installed. Uh, <clears throat> I went ahead and torqued the uh, four bolts to 108 foot, uh, inch pounds, 108 foot inch pounds. Um, so we know they're properly tight. So now we're just gonna button the rest of it up, fill it with coolant, and follow the bleeding procedure. Um, that's about it, it's a pretty simple job. I think just about anyone can do it, uh, as long as you have some mechanical uh, know-how. I'd rate it probably, I don't know, probably a five out of 10. It wasn't super difficult, uh, it just took a little time. Um, if you have all the parts, uh, then it goes pretty smoothly. Um, so I was going to explain, uh, I was going to replace this, uh, this right here. Um, I bought the new part number, but I decided not to install it, uh, just due to the fact that I didn't have a clamp to put right here. Um, I'll probably keep it and if it ever starts leaking I'll just replace it um, shouldn't be too bad to get to but the new design actually replaces this hose with uh, it has a little T that brings or that comes off and goes into that uh, into the water pump right there um, and then this gets replaced with just a piece that goes up and doesn't branch off into the water pump. And I have those parts on hand. Um, so these are the new um, coolant hoses and see how it has the little T that goes into the water pump right there. And then this is uh, the new pipe that goes up from the throttle body. I think it's called like the throttle body heater uh, coolant hose. And it really threw me off because um, I was trying to figure out what connected to here. But then I figured out that this is actually closed off so nothing connects right here and you can blow on it um, and actually see that it is closed off if you hold your finger over the other end um, so that really threw me for a loop um, and I'll post all those part numbers uh, in the description below so now I've installed all the covers um, I put on the upper radiator hose and then put the air box hoses back on and tightened all four clamps and that one. And then don't forget the clamp uh, behind on the throttle body and also the uh, there's a little hose that goes into the air box as well. Um, and then so I lifted up this top radiator hose and poured the antifreeze in it uh, just to fill the radiator and all the hoses below it. And then I put that on to, uh, so that upper radiator hose goes on to the uh, coolant crossover uh, pipe. Um, and then I followed the, uh, the bleeding procedure after that. And really, for that, um, I'll post how to do that. Um, it's it's not as hard as a lot of people make it seem. Uh, it's really just topping this, opening. There's a bleeder valve here until uh, air comes out, and then there's another bleeder valve back here on the back of the engine, 
Um, and you'll open those with the engine running um, and you'll see air come out and then it'll follow itself by, uh, or with some coolant coming out um, after that. And then when coolant comes out, you can close the valve. Um, there's also another uh, air bleed on the top of the crossover um, pipe here. This is, so this is the old crossover pipe. Um, I'll just set this down right here. This right here is actually a, an air bleed. So I actually poured antifreeze in this so that it would fill this pipe. Um, and that's also what the bleed procedure suggests um, to fill the system until antifreeze comes out of the air bleeder. And I'll post a link to the uh, bleeding procedures that I used um, down in the description below. We're moving through the night like we're from a different star, flying over streets.